football member was giving his condolences message because I know when, <laughs> when you lose a seat, I know how, how bitter you feel, Mr. Speaker. But he should do it within the confines of the standing orders, Mr. Speaker. When he goes personal now and he knows I come from Migori and he says he will go back to Mandera, I want, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I accept that he has given his condolence message, but Mr. Speaker, he has to know that he was removed by the NASA coalition, not by Junet Mohammed. He should not direct his anger on me, Mr. Speaker. We had a PG that was attended by 118 members of the NASA coalition, Mr. Speaker. And one of the issues that was raised, Mr. Speaker, is gross incompetence, Mr. Speaker. And I know he's my deputy. He is not very good in doing his job, Mr. Speaker. And he, that can be confirmed even by the Speaker he knows. Having served under you for eight years, Mr. Speaker, as a member of parliament. Gross incompetence, Mr. Speaker, and characters that cannot be associated with this... Uh, extraordinary characters that cannot be allowed in this house, Mr. Speaker, and you know what I mean. So, Mr. Speaker, let him accept it, and now he's even gone further outside the house. He has become a fake Secretary General of Ford Kenya, Mr. Speaker. So, he's a man who has done many, many bad things, Mr. Speaker. Please remove your items from the office. He said he is coming tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> oh, now, 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 now you want... You you don't turn the house into a, a party PG. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For information, Mr. Speaker, the deputy minority leader has no office. And me and Honorable Cecil Mbarira, we never had offices. And as Parliamentary Service Commission, you've been looking around to allocate us offices. We've been operating from our offices of our respective constituencies. It's unfortunate that the majority, the minority whip didn't know, Mr. Speaker. And that's why I said many things happen on this floor of the house, which he doesn't know. I don't have an office, and you are aware. The only offices that are located are the minority and minority leaders and the whips. As deputies, we don't have offices. So I have nowhere to start parking, Mr. Speaker. It was for good information for you to get to know. As I said, he doesn't know how the things are moving on. Mr. Speaker, as I speak on matters of Fort Kenya, the political parties, uh, my gesture will work on that. As we speak, I'm the interim secretary general of the party called for the Kenya. No. No. And if, the, if at all it will be communicated otherwise, Mr. Speaker, no. I respect the rule of law. It's not a must I continue being secretary general or going to be continue being the deputy whip. Whatever the communication that comes out, Mr. Speaker, I'll respect the way I respected when I was removed from the deputy whip that because of my association with the deputy president, William Ruto. William Ruto is an office, Mr. Speaker, deputy president. And I associated with him particularly on matters of the church. I'm the chair of, of Catholic members of parliament. I was not removed of incompetence, Mr. Speaker. I've been rated as one of the best legislators in this house, Mr. Speaker, when it comes to legislation. Where the whip cannot match a half. I have never brought any bill on this floor of the house. And you're aware about it, Mr. Speaker. He only comes here as a comedian, then he goes out. In the next five minutes, he'll not be here. If we table the number of bills I've brought on this floor of the house, which have been ascended by His Excellency the President. He has never brought any bill on this floor of the House apart from comic relief to the legislators, Mr. Speaker. We need to respect each other. We have freedom of association. And I'm ready. I left the House. If I was to be removed because of my association with the Deputy President, so be it, Mr. Speaker. The Deputy President, it is an... Mr. Speaker, if you are aware, those of us who have read about, uh, about Shakespeare, Shakespeare says, Mr. Speaker, that all of us here on the stage, we are, like we, are like, we, are, we are like players, Mr. Speaker. Then your time comes, you'll eventually exit. I've exited, Mr. Speaker. Junet Mohammed will never have this position forever. Even him, his time will come and go. And I've accepted what is there is to praise the Almighty God. As I move forward, to focus on my future endeavors. And I'll continue supporting His Excellency the President in all the endeavors for the purpose and the unity of this country, Mr. Speaker. I thank you. Now, I can see some other members who want to, to weigh on this, surely. I think this is, a, a, my, my role is uh, merely to communicate. 
if you look at the standing orders, my role is merely to communicate. So, so I think we should do it. It is true that uh, I have received, uh, I've received the minutes, but the, but the forwarding letter is not signed by the leader of the minority party. Yes, that it, I've received even the minutes and everything, but uh, they were not signed by the Honorable John Bundy. That's the only reason why I have not made the communication. I think uh, the information by the Honorable Junette was uh, gratis. No, no, no. I know, I, I'm aware. I was, I was with you in house business earlier in the morning, and I know you went for you went for budget. Don't know about your budget. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, you know, <coughs> this is a decision that was taken by PG, and now that uh, it has been publicly mentioned that I'm um, the one who was not signed, it may be misunderstood that I'm trying to protect uh, Chris Wamala to remain in the office, <laughs> uh, and you know the repercussion of that, Mr. Speaker, and I'm a very loyal and faithful servant to my party and my party leader. I just want to say that uh, I've been a bit engaged in budgetary matters and issues uh, of house business, but immediately after this, that letter will be with you before 5 p.m. And uh, so you will make the communication. I know Honorable Chris Wamalwa doesn't have an office, but he has a car, official car. I uh, would wish you, you stop using it from today and, uh, uh, well, I know Chris is a good friend of mine, and we are going to be in the Council of Governors together. I may need his vote for chair of Council of Governors. But on this matter, it was actually not your association with someone which made you re be removed. It's what you said in those meetings, those church arambes, uh, that, that is causing you all these problems. I wish you just spoke without mentioning a few things that you said which annoyed the membership of NASA in the National Assembly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, I have yet another communication, none of members, apart from the one by, by Honorable Barire. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me just, uh, you know, really take this opportunity to thank uh, the President for having given me a chance to serve in this House as a deputy majority leader, and uh, thank especially so the leader of majority, Honorable Dwale, for having given me a chance to serve and serve very well together. I learned so much from him, and I'm glad that he continues to be the majority leader because I think he's able, has what it takes, and tell and they stand, stand firm and work for this government because that is the most important thing. But also really take this opportunity to thank the members, especially on the Jubilee side, the majority side, who I would weep even when they're having a cup of tea and they're accepted to come out and vote for government. Let me also thank uh, Honorable Chris Wamalwa and tell him, please don't worry, stay firm. Uh, there's no politician who gets to the top the easy way. Setbacks will come and they make you stronger. They make you more focused. You now have time to do a lot of your work that you may not have been able to do. But I'm thanking him because when we needed to weep, he never told me that is a government issue. Go and do it. We whipped together. So Chris, you're not incompetent. You did a good job from where I sit. Never doubt yourself. Don't let anybody bring you down. Stay strong. And uh, to all members, let's continue to support the agenda of the Jubilee government. It is not a personal agenda, it's an agenda for the people of this country. So I'll continue to support it even from where I sit. And uh, I thank you all that really respected me as a leader. We don't have any offices, myself and Chris. The offices we've been sitting in are offices granted to us as members of parliament. So Jeanette, don't worry about that. For the cars, you can take them, it's okay. I have had a GK car many years before you and one day it went, so that's life, and it never stops you from going on. So we are good, we stay strong, steadfast, and completely committed to the agenda of Jubilee government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I see an intervention from the member for Kayo South. 
Honorable Speaker, I'm not sure whether to call this uh, an, interven an intervention or whatever, but I wanted to call this as a call to action. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I'm not sure whether to call this an intervention or whatever, but I wanted to find out from your, uh, 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 where you sit, Honorable Speaker, whether it is uh, now uh, a, 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 a wrong and, and, and breaking the law by associating with the deputy president. Because from, from where I sit, I realize that those uh, victims that have been uh, actually uh, 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 been removed from their seats have since been hunted out as a result of their association with the deputy president. Uh, if it is actually, uh, 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 if that office has been dehumanized or uh, it, it, it's evil to associate with him, then uh, uh, this house should make a pronouncement.